Okay, what we're going to be doing in this first uh, big section, and a lot of this particular class, actually, is focusing on 18th century counterpoint. Now, what this is, is the best way to think about it is as another species of counterpoint. Um, it's a variation of kind of elements of all the different species we've learned. So there are not strict new rules other than a few little things, but there are um, kind of elements of each one. And really, you can think of this as like, this is what happened when, you know, a composer sat down with a textbook, learned all the rules, and then started using them. You know, they started using them to write, you know, hymns and patriotic songs and things like that. And they said, these rules are cool, but boring, kind of. So I'm going to kind of change some stuff up uh, and make it sound good and interesting. So they started uh, doing a couple things that gave it a little more flair, so to speak. And we call that 18th century style. Um, because that's primarily when it popped up. So let's talk about a couple of the things that we're going to find that are differences, kind of the big picture things to start. Um, we still do a lot of note to note counterpoint. So for every, you know, one note in the cantus firmus, the uh, counterpoint has one note or two notes or three notes. However, um, the the let's let's the the cantus firmus let's continue to call it a cantus firmus for just a another minute and then we're going to change that word but the cantus firmus has uh is not strict whole notes uh it's typically half notes or even quarter notes so the the rhythms of the counterpoint change up a little bit kind of like fifth species counterpoint or free counterpoint that we saw before So we don't have that strict note to note movement because the movement of the, the rhythmic movement is kind of shifting around often. The intervals that we use, the same rules still apply for consonants and dissonance, uh, stepwise motion, all those rules still apply, except composers are going to be using more seventh chords here. Uh, and what that means is that our definition of consonant and dissonant is going to change a little bit um, because a seventh chord is primarily a consonant chord, even though it has some dissonances in it. And by using a seventh chord in these pieces, uh, it gives the piece more forward momentum. I think that's one of the things that composers were trying to get away from is that in traditional counterpoint, uh, Things don't push forward like they do in a song, not till the very end. You know, at the very end of those counterpoint examples we looked like, or that we looked at, it felt like there was a good, like, oh, okay, that's the end. But in the middle of it, it didn't feel like it was pushing anywhere, you know? They just kind of spin around in circles in a way. And what composers really tried to do with this in this 18th century style is make the whole piece of music feel like it was heading in a direction, like it was moving forward, uh, leading towards the end. So seventh chords help with that. 